A new study reveals there could be millions more illegal immigrants in South Africa than initially thought. Sixteen people are injured in a morning pile-up in Johannesburg. And another landmark ruling for same-sex couples. Live from Johannesburg, this is E! News, primetime. Good evening. South Africa may have millions more illegal immigrants than previously thought. So suggests a report commissioned by the labor union, UASA. It means that although the economy is creating thousands of jobs, the unemployment rate may be worse than official figures suggest. Labor union UASA's report says South Africa's economy is creating jobs, but fewer than the 30,000 per month of last year. The report, compiled by economist Mike Schussler, blames rising interest rates for scaring off some small companies from hiring. I think the other factor is that the South African economy generally, while still growing, has slowed a little bit from the pace of about 5% last year to probably around the 4% level, and that meant people aren't employing as many people as they did before. So South Africa is still creating jobs, but there are other figures which suggest that the unemployment battle is still being lost. UASA's report says as many as 10 million illegals could be living in South Africa. This is based on the number of people entering the country, but not recorded as leaving, as well as estimates for illegal border crossings. Illegal immigrants are accused of driving up South African unemployment figures, but Schussler says they're often entrepreneurs and create jobs. Also, we know that a lot of the illegal immigrants that are coming specifically from countries with an economic and political stress are uh, bringing their skills here, and that would be doctors, nurses, engineers, and that type of stuff. Schussler says the government has limited options. Building a wall to keep people out is unrealistic. He suggests corruption should be driven out of home affairs. But also that immigrants with skills should be welcomed, not forced to live a life on the margins of society. Ben said, E! News, Johannesburg. Bloemfontein's former chief state pathologist has been hauled before disciplinary hearing. He stated on a death certificate that a young woman had died of AIDS. The Health Professions Council has charged Dr. Leon Wagner with unprofessional conduct, saying he had no evidence to support that finding. In August last year, Dr. Leon Wagner examined the body of a young woman. He listed AIDS as the cause of death. The Health Professions Council alleges this was a wild guess, as he had no way of knowing she died of an HIV-AIDS-related illness. Wagner claims he's been hauled over the coals for daring to use the word AIDS on a death certificate. But experts say that's not actually against the law. Medically, it doesn't make sense because it's quite a clumsy formulation. You'd expect a doctor to actually give more information, but doctors have been doing this for the last 10 years. But there is still a stigma attached to dying of an HIV-AIDS-related illness. Funeral and life insurers have been known to refuse to pay out if the policyholder dies of an HIV-AIDS-related illness. But the insurance companies get that information from the deceased's medical records and not details on the death certificate, which are confidential. The details on a person's death certificate are sent to government's mortality statistics bureau. They are only given a patient's number, never their name. Anna Kalasen, E! News. Cape Town. An Eastern Cape woman charged with poisoning her own children has been sent for psychiatric evaluation. She allegedly tried to kill herself after feeding her children a lethal cocktail of tablets. Vanessa Bayer allegedly fed her one-year-old and three-year-old daughters crushed tablets and then slit her own wrists. A neighbor found the children unconscious on the bed, but it was too late to save them. Bayer survived and was arrested for their murders. Police say the girl's parents had argued that day and the father had moved out hours before the incident. 39-year-old Bayer will spend a month at Fort England Psychiatric Hospital in Grahamstown. 
One person has been killed in a rush hour crash in Johannesburg involving four vehicles. Sixteen others were injured in this morning's accident. Eyewitnesses say the driver of this BMW was waiting for oncoming traffic when a taxi hit his car from behind. In the ensuing chaos, two trucks traveling in the opposite direction plowed into each other. One of the trucks drove over the BMW, killing a passenger inside the car. The driver of the BMW was airlifted to hospital in a serious condition. Fifteen others sustained multiple injuries. Police are investigating the cause of the accident. Same-sex couples have won another landmark victory in the Constitutional Court. It has ruled that they have the same inheritance rights as married heterosexual couples. Mark Gorey's life partner, Henry Brooks, died without a will last April. His parents laid claim to the couple's home and the rest of his estate. But after a legal battle of almost a year, the Pretoria High Court recognized Gorey as Brooks's life partner and declared him the sole heir. The court also found parts of the Interstate Succession Act unconstitutional, saying it discriminated against same-sex couples. Gorey then took his case to the Constitutional Court, which has now confirmed this ruling. In a unanimous judgment, it declared that same-sex couples have the same inheritance rights as their married heterosexual counterparts. This means that same-sex life partners can now automatically inherit from each other, even if one of them dies without a will. This will apply both to same-sex couples who get married in terms of the Civil Unions Bill and those who are in committed relationships. And now for a quick look at the markets. All your international news coming up after the break, including chaos across Baghdad. 133 people are killed in a string of bombings.